of the WNC Nature Center is to connect people with the plants and animals of the Southern Appalachians by inspiring appreciation, nurturing understanding, and advancing conservation of the region's rich biodiversity. And so having red wolves here is really key to who we are and what we do as a facility. So red wolves, if you didn't know, at one point right after the Endangered Species Act were incredibly endangered. So they went out after that act passed trying to conserve the red wolves and they only found 14 breeding individuals. And so all of the red wolves descend, alive today are descended from those 14 original animals. When people come to a place like the Nature Center, see red wolves in the flesh and get a chance to see how beautiful these animals are and realize that they used to be the wolf that used to live here in the southeast. Uh, it's important then to make connections with them to show that this is a type of an animal that we champion here at the Nature Center. We work very closely with other agencies to help save. So even though they may not live in our backyards like they used to, we're doing everything we can to help save their wild populations. I'm Chris Gentile. I'm the director at the Western North Carolina Nature Center. And I've been here about eight years and uh, really I'm excited to share with everyone the things that we're doing here at the Nature Center with red wolves and with other endangered species. The rest of North Carolina Nature Center is very involved with red wolves and we've had red wolves on a collection now for uh, well over a dozen years. Unfortunately, a lot of the animals that we see in the world today exist in zoos, uh, but the goal is to hopefully get this population firmly established back in the wild and that's what we support here at the Nature Center. Red wolves or Canis rufus are a species of wolves that did live historically here in North Carolina. Um, so their range was actually from Pennsylvania all the way down through Florida over to Texas. And they lived in a variety of habitats as far as we know. So marshes, forests, plains, so they were pretty adaptable that way. But these are wolves that are very different from the wolves that many of us know. You know, the wolves that most of us know are the gray wolves. So those are the wolves of common nature documentaries, the ones you see chasing a buffalo around in the snow. So that's the kind of animal that the gray wolves are. But the red wolves were different from that. So red wolves lived in smaller packs in this area. So you're talking anywhere from three to eight individuals. And they were a distinct species from the gray wolves. There are several differences between the red versus the gray or traditional wolf. They vary greatly in size. The red wolf, uh, the average size is between 50 to 60 pounds whereas the gray wolf is the average size is between 80 to 100 pounds. Um, another main difference is the diet between the two species. The gray wolf tends to eat a much larger prey such as moose or other deer species. Um, the red wolf tends to eat a much smaller prey item such as rabbits or rodents. of the red wolves is there was a lot of persecution for them. So a lot of human persecution as North Carolina was settled by early farmers. So that was a big piece. People were afraid of them. They were afraid for their livestock. And a lot of that fear was unfounded. It was historical fears that came over with European settlers. And so with those fears in combination with a total habitat change in most of North Carolina as it was farmed out, really put a lot of pressure on the red wolves and really helped to push their numbers lower and lower in, into more remote areas. Also, uh, recently there have been no new releases of red wolves back into the wild. Um, their mortality rate has greatly increased. Um, and currently the federal and state agencies are deciding whether to continue the efforts to restore this species. Um, and the, the big question that they are dealing with is whether or not to keep them listed as an endangered species.
Red Wolf, historically speaking, hasn't really had a lot of protection. You know, for about three centuries or so, we bombed, poisoned, gunned down, and slaughtered Red Wolves without abandon. And it was through that that the species was very nearly lost. And it wasn't until really the 60s and the 70s that the Red Wolf got any form of legal protection. And that was, of course, through the Endangered Species Act, which is really our nation's most powerful conservation law for protecting wildlife. And it's definitely the mechanism upon which the Red Wolf depends. My name's Christian Hunt. I'm the Southeast Program Associate for Defenders of Wildlife. And Defenders of Wildlife is a national conservation group, and we work on not only the red wolf, but all sorts of endangered species throughout the southeast and the larger country for that matter, as well as the habitats upon which they depend. Good conservation requires working with folks from all sorts of different backgrounds, really, and that's no different for the red wolf. Here in North Carolina, we're working with of course, the general public, North Carolinians in general, to leverage support for the Red Wolf, but we're also working to develop landowner incentives for Red Wolves. We're working with elected officials to generate that broader constituency for the species. And of course, we're also working within the law to protect this animal as well. So conservation for all species, and in particular, the Red Wolf, you have to look at it very holistically, and we're working with all those folks to ensure that the Red Wolf has a long-term future here in North Carolina. I think one of the best things that a place like the Western North Carolina Nature Center could do for red wolf populations, of course they don't live around us in the mountains here anymore like they used to, but we can educate people about the efforts that are going on on our eastern coast of North Carolina and uh, quite honestly the other reintroduction efforts that are going on. The Nature Center works with its red wolves to help spread awareness simply by having them on display and lots of informational materials uh, around their exhibit, talking about them. People are always free to ask questions when they see a keeper or an education personnel, and, and we're always happy to answer questions. thing about red wolves uh, in a captive situation or in a, a population like we have a managed population in zoos and aquariums and, and nature centers is that there's a lot more zoos and aquariums now that are that are featuring this animal in their exhibits and what's great about that is it gives us more opportunity to breed up the population to create more of a viable population that could then be reintroduced into the wild and uh, even though there's there's only a few organizations in North Carolina that have these wolves in their collection there's many, many institutions nationwide that feature red wolves. Even places like uh, Tacoma, Washington, which is the place where the Species Survival Program is run through AZA. Even though there's no red wolves in the Pacific Northwest, or never has been, uh, zoos can come together no matter where they are and pull together to help save a species. So one of the biggest programs right now going on with Red Wolves is the Red Wolf SSP, the Species Survival Plan. And so that's actually something that we participate in here at the Nature Center. And so that program is a partnership of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and partner institutions such as us. And so that is a captive management and breeding program. And so what that does is the institutions that are part of that program house these animals, we take care of them, and we also participate in breeding, research, and education as related to those animals. The Nature Center works with the SSP program in a couple of different ways. We follow recommendations to breed our wolves here at the Nature Center as they request. 
Another way is we assist with collecting data for research on red wolves. One of the things we've done is we've helped researchers be able to collect tracks from the exhibit. And this is to help them develop ways to monitor uh, wolf numbers and coyote numbers in the wild. A second thing we've done is we've helped collect blood samples. The blood that we collect is to go to a general data bank of uh, information and this will just in, in general help us strengthen the knowledge on red wolves. In the future, moving forward, uh, we do have a breeding pair of red wolves. Um, and in the hopes that we will be able to get uh, offspring from the two that we have who were genetically paired with one another to help uh, increase populations, be it they go into other uh, institutions in order to help spread awareness and allow people the ability to be able to see these animals. And then hopefully maybe one day some of these animals will be released back into the wild. Conservation efforts are only as effective as the sum of their parts, and in order for a species to truly recover, and especially a carnivore, you've got to have folks from a lot of different organizations and backgrounds working together. And Defenders of Wildlife, as a national conservation group, is really excited and proud to work alongside the WNC Nature Center, which has played an integral role in safeguarding this species for the future, and we're looking to, forward to working together to ensure that Red wolves always have a place not only in captivity, but in the wild. So one of the biggest things that people can do to help red wolves is to learn their story. Red wolves are an animal that a lot of people don't really know that they exist at all. And so to learn about them, their conservation history, and there's a lot of really great information out there from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, from the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. But to learn that information and then to become their storytellers is really one of the biggest things that people can do to share that information, to educate others about the existence of this species and their current situations. I see the future of this program uh, only getting better as new opportunities exist for places to reintroduce them to, into the wild and as new conservation partners come on board and help bring these animals into a, a protected place like a zoo or aquarium or nature center and help breed their populations back to, uh, to viable numbers. In my opinion, the red wolf is sort of a uniquely American treasure. You know, unlike the gray wolf, which went all the way up into Canada, all the way down into Mexico, the red wolf's entire historic range was confined within what is the United States. So it is very much an all-American wolf, if you will. And it's rarer than the Siberian tiger, the snow leopard, really all the most endangered species that we tend to think of. And I think that as proud Americans, we should treat it as such and take pride in this animal, which is now the world's most endangered canine.
Thank you.